found an obscure looking box in the pile of equipment that's getting disposed of or turned into the warehouse. I thought to myself, I haven't seen too many of those before. And I got to looking at it, I thought, there's more to the story on this. If I haven't seen something very much, it's usually very special. And I did my research. It is special. Very rare. Kind of a new technology, and yet here it is getting turned in. We're going to go over endotracheal cardiac output monitors. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I have a very unique device. This guy was actually technically pulled out of the trash. He was going to get disposed of or turned into the warehouse. This is the Ecom or the endotracheal cardiac output monitor. And it's an extremely rare device because most cardiac output uses a Swan Gans catheter and it's hooked up to a normal cardiac output monitor. This guy is a less invasive method of getting that reading. Anyway, this guy uses an endotracheal tube, which is a long flexible tube, which goes down the throat of the patient, and it's properly seated very close to the heart. And then it's inflated, and there's this bubble on the end. And the bubble, it will have close contact to the outside edges of the endotracheal tube, so that it's gonna be positioned really close to the aorta of the heart. Anyway, the way that this guy works is it shoots a high frequency AC across the pads and these are silver doped electrodes and there should be about seven of them on there if I remember correctly. And it uses different geometries of different electrodes in order to come up with a three dimensional resistance figure for the amount of blood that's being pumped through the aorta. And this means that they don't have to run a Swan Gans catheter into the patient it's just there and I do imagine that it's very fussy about the placement inside the tracheal tube. I do believe that this guy is probably a game changer. I would assume that it works rather well. On the first screen as you come into it you can see that it does ask for your patient's demographics, uh, height, weight, age, and then it goes right on into your waveform and it's actually very cool. Very simple layout and when the device is set up correctly it should come up with a measurement for the amount of blood being pumped from the left ventricle of the heart so guys this is just one of those devices it's got a very special purpose and you don't see them that often and most people just look right over it they think ah, oh, it's just a surgical handpiece or something but as soon as i seen the scale on the front of it i knew that this guy was going to be very special this is the cord that goes from the front of the device. It connects to the endotracheal tube. Endotracheal tube is going to be in the patient. It not only creates an airway for the patient, but it also has the measurement electrodes in it. So it's an all-in-one solution. It's a very cool device. You can tell it's kind of loud. That sound that you hear is from the fans. The front is really simple. It's just got a single dial. And my particular unit, yeah, you can see it's got a fan, two fuses, it's got a communications module on the back with two serial ports. And if I remember correctly, these serial ports right here are going to be uh, running to a serial port server, which is a little device that takes serial data from your medical equipment and it converts it over to HL7, to which your EPIC or whatever your system is, your digital medical record is going to strip this data as it, as it needs. So it's a pretty cool device. Very simple, but I think I want to take a look inside and see how it runs. What do you think? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and take a look inside this guy because I always try and anticipate what is inside that makes these devices work. And a device like this, I normally wouldn't take apart if it was still in service because, as I said earlier, there's not too many of them in circulation, so you don't want to just tear something apart, maybe avoid the warranty, the calibration, whatever. This guy is moving on to another life, so it's fair game. You can see I got four fasteners on the bottom, and 
got a whole string of fasteners here on the back panel. Gosh, somebody really went off on these screws. So, before I go ahead and take this cover off, I anticipate that inside this guy is going to be a bunch of operational amplifiers, signal amplifiers, because it obviously has to take an analog signal in and it has to compute those numerics. So I'm automatically assuming that there's going to be an amplifier board. There's probably going to be a PC slash control board and it's got the module on the back. So it's going to have some sort of communications board. Let's take a look. Let's see what we got. Oh, wild. Look at this. It's got way more going on inside it. Okay, what do we got? Astrodyne. What is this? Okay, so I have my uh, low voltage power supply over here where my AC comes in, converts over to DC. But there's a lot more to the story because there's something right here. It's called Astrodyne. What does it say? I have no clue what that guy is. I'm very curious now. It looks like it's another type of power supply. Anyway, I can see input, output power. Oh, okay. Let's see. This right here has got a very large resistor, almost like a calibration resistor. It says current source. I have an RF board, apparently, because there's a series of RF antennas right here in the middle. And as I said, there's going to be a bunch of operational amplifiers or just signal amplifiers. And I have an RF cage down here in the bottom. You see it? And around the RF cage, there seems to be an interboard jumper. And I would assume that your signal processing is being done inside this RF cage. Just because normally uh, signal amplifiers, you want those as isolated from everything else as possible. And usually they'll, they will be isolated using either shielding or some sort of extra panel. There's shielding in between each and every one of these layers. Here's a panel. And you can see it's got this guy down here at the bottom. There's a panel right there. It's really neat. I can see some calibration potentiometers. It's a little bit of, a little bit of old school going on there. I wonder what year this guy is. Now, if I remember correctly, this technology is not that old. I think they were uh, experimenting with endotracheal cardiac output maybe in around 2009. And it, this one here has a build date of 2010. So this has to be one of the first endotracheal cardiac output monitors. And maybe that's why it's got all these boards thrown in together. I mean, the build quality is really nice. I can see they use extra good fasteners with lock washers on everything. Everything's labeled. Very meticulous. In fact, just judging by the numerics on these RF cables, I would say that this looks like maybe it was assembled in Europe because of the numerics and how they draw their 7s and their 1s. I wonder if that's true. That would make a lot of sense because this looks very German. Very German indeed. So there's another isolation panel here that uh, separates your noisy sources of power, which are going to be your uh, switch mode power supplies. And this one here looks like it's a step down transformer, maybe an adjustable power supply, this long thin guy right here. So I've got one power supply, maybe two. Really interesting. It's a fascinating guy. I had no clue that it has all these RF cables in here. Now, I can see all these guys right here are little potentiometers. And I would also assume that all of these ones right here are going to be your different um, channels. Different signal channels. Wow. And every single one of these is... Very meticulously calibrated. I couldn't fathom what that guy's job's like. Sitting there calibrating these things all day. So there's one RF line on this board with one potentiometer for adjustment. This board up here has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 
Holy cow. And then there's uh, one on this little board. 24. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I don't see a CPU. I wonder if that's what's in this little shield down here at the bottom. Normally you would see a very fat CPU that controls this guy. It might be on the display because the display often acts as a controller. Yeah, I'm, I'm betting it's on the display. So anyway, guys, it's a cardiac output monitor. It's very complex, way more complex than I was expecting. I would not suggest anybody ever open one of these up while it's still in service because as you can see, this is not the type of thing you want to take one chance at snapping one of these uh, RF antennas off. Just anything could go wrong by opening this guy up. Everything is very meticulously tied down and secured. Just an amazing build quality, really. But that is the Ecom endotracheal cardiac output monitor. I wish I had an endotracheal tube to show you guys, but I assume that the consumables ran out probably a while ago, which is why they're probably turning this guy in. It's also a reason why I created another video which was talking about planned obsolescence because the day that they decide to quit manufacturing these very specific endotracheal tubes is the day that the device you purchased is no longer valid. You might as well turn it in. It's not worth its weight in trash. So anyway, guys, that is the endotracheal cardiac output monitor. Very cool little device. I, I love it, man. This is what I'm doing this job for, so I can tear cool stuff apart, figure out how it's working. And I, this is one device I would clearly say, do not pull apart. <laughs> There's too much stuff going on in this bad boy right here. I would assume it's very um, fussy about static electricity too. So anyway, guys, hope you like this little deep dive into endotracheal cardiac output monitors. I would love to see what the new version of this guy does because this one is obviously uh, first gen technology. So build quality, excellent. Build date is 2010. Thanks for watching, guys.